Hey friends, welcome back. This is Crease Pattern Class 6 and I'm so excited to bring this to you guys. It's been quite a while. It's been about 10, 11 months since the last class. Um, so I'm excited to bring you back to uh, the Crease Pattern class. I know a lot of you have been asking me when Class 6 has come out and it's taken a while for me to kind of think what Class 6 should be. Um, right now, our goal is to, again, get to the point where we can fold uh, Damien Maliki's beetle, his son beetle, um, and kind of breaking up those parts, I want to make sure I'm teaching it correctly. Um, but other than that, welcome back to Class 6. Uh, this is Part 1 of Class 6. Uh, we're going to go to a... I'm not sure how many parts we're going to have, but I'll explain kind of what we're looking for in Class 6. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so... This uh, cl this specific video, um, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of crease patterns, including Damien Maliki's Sun Beetle, which again, uh, this is not my design. Thank you, Damien, for letting me use this. Um, links in the description to check out some of his designs and folds. Um, but we're going to be looking at some crease patterns and observing the structure compared to the model and kind of understand how to start tackling some more difficult crease patterns. Um, but yeah, uh, originally this was just going to be actually solving the parts. Um, that might be the later videos in class six, um, just breaking down some more challenging parts. Uh, there's not quite a way that I think I can teach this in like a formulaic manner, kind of what the other classes have been like. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to kind of get you guys to understand or to just be trying out um, some of these maneuvers and whatnot to uh, collapse it. Um, I'm not the ultimate like crease pattern like teacher. So some of these structures, I can't exactly generate a sequence that's going to work every time. Um, but by kind of observing these structures and having you guys practice them, I hope that it builds the understanding where you guys can go out and apply these tips to any kind of crease pattern. Uh, so that's kind of the direction we're going in. Uh, but for now, let's just take a look at some crease patterns. All right, so let's get started. Um, now this is an exercise that I've mentioned is really good to do uh, in some earlier videos. Uh, which is to get a crease pattern and you don't have to fold it, but get a crease pattern and observe it. Try to break down what you know, what you don't know. Um, and as you practice this and you make more guesses, you'll slowly understand uh, crease patterns and they'll look a lot less crazy. You'll, you'll be able to see some, some patterns that uh, are shared amongst a lot of other crease patterns. Um, and yeah, it just helps you get into folding them uh, once you actually, you know, get your paper prepped and everything. Uh, so let's take a look at the sun beetle. Um, and I have the image of the beetle next to it so we can use some reference. When you do this, I think this is actually a really good idea so you guys can kind of pick out um, what parts are what. Um, that's basically what looking at the crease pattern is. So. First thing we're going to do, we're going to label some of the more obvious parts. And when I mean obvious parts, we're going to take a look at the edges. And then after the edges, we're going to take a look at structures we know, structures we've covered already. Um, so before we look at the crease pattern, uh, let's take a look at, let me make sure my pen's working. Um, okay, perfect. So let's do this. And we're just going to be taking a look at these guys. Um, so on the legs, we notice we have split toes. Uh, they're not toes, but the, the insect feet, they're the claws, they're split. And sometimes this can be achieved with shaping, but in this case, with the crease pattern, we can notice these half units are these toes. And um, what you can see is, um, actually this one's not, <laughs> it's just these. And what you can notice is they're just um, simple, I guess what we would have called flaps in the middle, or you can notice they are half units. So this is a 32 grid, um, but this edge, this flap at the edge is a half unit. Um, doing this is part of what makes these legs color changed, which is the other, you know, obvious uh, detail you guys might notice. Uh, and that color change allows this small half unit flap just to be at the end this should be no big issue when you collapse. Uh, should make 
sense on how to collapse this if you've gone through the other uh, classes. Um, perhaps when you're looking at this, you might then come to the realization of what is going on here. Um, so we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but for now we can see, all right, we got six legs here and then there's the six legs with the toes on this side. Um, not only that, we can notice that the legs are made out of Elias stretches made by here and here. Um, and then this one is separated. It's its own thing where it's part of an Elias stretch. And then once again, this area gets a lot more complex. Um, again, we'll detail on that one later. Um, let's get into some more structures we can quickly find. I'm just going to clear some of these lines out. Um, so we can notice um, the shell. So let's take a look at the shell. This is going into the middle. And at least with this design, we should be able to realize uh, some structures. Um, OK, so first part of the shell is we see this. So there's, if you look closely, there is a pleat here and a separate pleat here. Um, you might have to zoom in when you look out on your phone, but we can notice there's another pleat here, just like this. And I know that uh, the corners are cut off, but you um, generally here, this is shaping. Sometimes it's not shaping, sometimes it's the actual structure. Um, so we'll take a look at the crease pattern to check those out. Um, after that, we just have the head, uh, which we'll talk about later. Um, but let's try to find those parts in the crease pattern. So when you take a look at this uh, separated shell down the middle, this is like one of the exercises we've done in the past. And you'll notice that we have the um, valley right there, followed by a mountain, followed by another mountain, and then a level shifted valley. Once again, we have a valley here, mountain, mountain, level shifted valley. And if you can imagine what this would look like, um, you can actually just take a, a sheet and maybe fold like a eight grid into it. Um, and yeah, this, this forms that pleated structure. It's going to be kind of shaped um, like this. This is what the flaps will look like if you can imagine it from if you're looking at it from uh, like a flat angle I guess um, so that's that's what we're getting here um, other than that the next section to complete this uh, the second shell this second this top shell is not split and that's made by this shape right here so we can actually just draw it out um, and how I know it's right here is again when we're looking at level shifters we're looking for the mountain folds the, uh, and there's a, a unit that's uh, all mountain folds right here. This is a mountain region um, that's contained inside these level shifters. And if you notice, um, let, me, <laughs> let me clear out some of these lines for y'all. Um, the shape of it is the same shape as the shell in the image. And at this time, this explains that um, the corners are actually part of the design. They're not um shaped in and that's what's causing here so that means this level shifter is just a little bit different um, but the other two sets i guess our two sets is this set for the pleated shell and then this set for the middle shell these will be our totally normal level shifters we've done in the past um, now if you've done my beetle as one of the exercises um that kind of level shifter is very similar to here. And how you can tell is if you look closely, these outside ones are mountains and the inside ones are valleys, uh, unlike the four valley folds that are typical to normal level shifters. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna keep those in mind that that might be something we need to test fold going on. Um, but the other uh, level shifters are, are completely normal. And I guess the last uh, obvious structure that we've covered in the past are these pleats. Now, if you haven't taken the crease pattern class all the way through, these pleats might scare you. Uh, but if you have taken the crease pattern class, these pleats will not scare you. And so that's one of the benefits of knowing how to do these, um, knowing that they look a lot scarier than they actually are. And if you practice the exercise on how to do them, which actually teaches about the, I guess, flaps in the middle and turning those into pleats. 
which are half units. Um, then this this should be a walk in the park for you. Uh, it should be one of the things that you're not worried about at all, especially since they're connected to easier structures on the sides like these Elias stretches. Um, nothing too tricky here. Now, when you look at the model, you actually can't see where these pleats are happening. Um, but you can observe right here, we have another set of flaps in the middle with this being mountain, this being valley. Um, and this mountain, you can relate to the tip right here. Um, and that basically shows the length of the beetle as well as these pleats being the underbelly of the beetle. Um, so in this case, if you can't find more images of the model, um, then you might have to extrapolate a little bit what these are for. If you have more pictures of the model, you could look for one on the underside and kind of see these pleats, what direction they're facing and all that. But this is nothing too challenging. So besides those obvious structures, we're going to move on a little bit to some of the more questionable or maybe scarier and challenging structures. Um, and when you're looking at a crease pattern for the first time, it's hard to actually determine if it's hard. It's more so about uh, what are you unfamiliar with, what kind of worries you. And then we can break those down uh, to see how they work. So we're going to jump back to this structure right here. So this is some half units with uh, what you might assume to be some hinges and then a Pythagorean stretch. Now, over time, you might be able to figure out what part of the model this is, but at first glance, it might be a little difficult. Um, the easier kind of part to look at is if you look around this area, maybe you can kind of like geolocate where it is. So we know that this is the front leg and we have a Pythagorean stretch, which if you've practiced the Pythagorean stretch uh, class, you know it also helps make points. Um, where is our other point? We can kind of follow that this is another point. Now, what is this point? Um, if we look at our model, then we can pretty much guarantee the next longest flap and the only other long flap on this side is the antennae. Um, so now that leaves this guy. Where is this? This has to be somewhere in the middle between those two flaps. And if we look closely at the model, which I'm not sure how easy it is to tell on screen, but there are color changed eyes right here. And color changing eyes, specifically with box plate models, you can't exactly just, you know, peel paper or stretch layers for this. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. So this must be a structure and that structure is this little corner right here and as the pythagorean stretch class goes you know we have this extra uh flap right here and this is what's used for the eye the half units part of those are hinges but also details on um the the color change nature of the eye it's pretty much just to flip it to the black side um but yeah that's kind of the process you can go through to kind of geolocate um, parts of a model that you're not exactly sure, you know, what they are. Um, uh, so that's kind of just one that I wanted to show with that process. Um, but yeah, let's move on to, I guess, some other complex parts of this crease pattern. We've gone on for quite a little bit. So this last part is just going to wrap up this video. Um, and that is going to be about this section as well as this kind of section. Now, um, this middle section we'll go over first and you might be wondering why, like, oh boys, what's wrong with this section? You know, this could be just part of an ally stretch. It's kind of weirdly shaped. Um, but I'll show you guys that when you look closer, um, it's actually a little bit trickier than it comes off to be. Uh, and I'll explain, uh, why that is and kind of what to look out for when you see this or you know how to look out for this um, but yeah let's get to this middle section so the location of this should be pretty obvious it is uh, the front of the head or I guess the mouth and um, one thing you'll notice is that everything here is color changed so both antennae are color changed um, the small mandibles are color changed 
and the flaps are two for the mandibles and two long ones for the antennae. Um, so as we saw before, we, we know where the antennae are. They're, they're right here. Um, if you can kind of imagine the circle, <laughs> it's kind of like this, or I guess, uh, um, yeah, where they are. And so this section, we're looking for two points um, that are formed, but there's a lot of intersections here. Um, so while you might think, okay, these are just hinges, uh, let's just look for these points. When you try to look for the points, which is normally formed by, you know, subsequent mountain folds, they get a point like a water bomb base, it's going to be a little bit harder to pick out where these are. And the reason for that comes from the fact that it's color changed. And this is where some tricky stuff happens, but our mountain folds are actually here, 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 and here. So these set of V's are all mountain and if you also look it might kind of freak you out that this is valley and then the next fold is a valley which normally the next fold would be a mountain um, but yeah how does this work um, and this it's a little bit more complicated of a structure but uh, kind of a lot of hinges can actually turn into level shifters and if they're not level shifters they are reverse folds which are very commonly used for color changing um, so that's what this starts out with and from here we're able to get the um, two points um, we'll go over what this collapse actually looks like um, later on um, in some of those classes we're just kind of pointing out for now the little bit of challenging part a little bit confusing part uh, compared to normal um, but let's take a look at the other section. It's a very similar issue to what we just saw. So this section, why is this weird? Why is this not just a regular Elias stretch? Um, what we're looking at here is also an irregularity in the patterns of mountain folds and valley folds. So let's take a look at this line right here. This is a horizontal line. Um, here it is mountain. And along this side, it's valley. Now, we've seen these a lot, you know, alternating mountain valleys that become hinges. However, the hinges are not here. We can notice the alternating pattern lies across here, and this is for the level shifters. Um, so what's happening to cause this one fold to be valley on one side and mountain on the other? And similar to the front area, this is, an, this is a case of color change. Um, and in the case of color change, I guess one of the rationales we can look for is a sequence of reverse folds. Where are those reverse folds going to happen? And in this case, we can notice that once again, we have that V formation of a lot of valley, or sorry, a lot of mountains right here. And these are what are what form the reverse folds which then become the color change now there's again this isn't <laughs> the most explanation uh, way to kind of detail on this exact structure or why it works um, but what I recommend and what we're going to do in some of the next um, parts of this class is look at what happens when you have these reverse folds um, how, how can they be used for the color change? Um, and then it'll start to be easier to kind of notice these uh, because when you tr look, when you get to collapsing this model, if you tried to collapse these like regular Elias stretches, it's not going to make sense at all and it's going to make your paper pretty jumbled. Um, and yeah, it, it can definitely lead to a mess. Um, so this whole area we're going to kind of take a look at later on um, and kind of see. Uh, what approaches we can take to collapse this. Um, but yeah, that is all for this video. Um, uh, it, I know it's just, just kind of simple going over uh, one example, um, but hopefully this kind of helps you guys when you look at other crease patterns or you look at crease patterns you want to try. Um, if you've made it past class 5, that means you should be able to at least start on some easier crease patterns. Um, so this hopefully can also help you determine what's an easier crease pattern or what crease pattern is within your reach a little bit. Um, right now I think this one's a little bit outside the reach of 
you know, if you've only done up to class five because of some of these weird structures, but if you find a crease pattern that doesn't have these weird color changes, but it has similar structures and you, you might be able to, you know, try it out uh, for yourself. Other than that, I'm going to leave you guys with a couple of exercise examples to do. Um, one of them is this uh, Samurai V3 flat folding crease pattern. Um, now, you might be familiar with my, <laughs> with my Samurai design in the past. You might have even seen the crease pattern in the past. But this one's a little bit different um, as I've actually included all the hinges to make it flat folding. Um, the other editions of the crease pattern were not flat folding. There was not really mistakes, but I was uh, using the creases for the structure, um, which in my head was a three-dimensional structure versus trying to collapse it and fold it all flat. Um, so this crease pattern should be on my Instagram uh, right now, depending on when this video is posted, but it should be one of my latest posts. Um, that includes the samurai, and then if you slide over, you'll see this crease pattern. Feel free to maybe, you know, take a screenshot, print it out, look at one of my samurai, and try to do the same thing. Circle all the points that you guys recognize, circle the points that seem really weird, and then try to figure out what the reason is. Um, I'll give you guys a hint with this one. There's just a lot of hinges, so look out for those. Look out for some other structures. Um, just kind of see if you can match the proportions, kind of geolocate uh, where all the points are, and that sort of thing. Other than that, feel free to find any other uh, crease pattern and kind of do the same process with it. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Um, it's going to take me a little bit to make that one as I want to show the more complex structures well enough for everyone to understand. Uh, but if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm excited to bring back this series, and I hope you guys enjoy. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm